So let's look at mechanics of how this works and how the markets determine the interest rate. Step one is look at the uh, bond as a contract. And it's a contract with certain key parameters. And you might imagine a 50 to 100 page document. However, the key financial terms are on this blue box. First, as we mentioned, the principal or face amount that you can think of as the amount borrowed, and that's 100 million, let's say. The interest rate or coupon rate in this example was 8% per year. The frequency of payment, we had called this term before, is annual. Again, we typically do semi-annual, but we'll use this for simplicity. Next is the date of issuance, and we'll just say January 1st, year one. And then maturity is always at 100% of the face amount, and it's due, in this case, five years from now. Okay, so um, this section here represents the instrument itself and the parties are the issuer and in this case we create a company called Halt Widget Company and the other is the investment banker. Now this is very complex and legal procedures so Halt Widget Company will hire the investment bank to advise them on how to issue the bond. So next we go to the market. The iBank had determined those as a reasonable offer to the community, the investment community, and it goes to market. In this case, there's yet a third party. The third party is the investing community. They look at the bond, they make their own assessment, and they determine what they're willing to pay for the bond based on their yield. Once the money moves, then the net proceeds goes to the issuer, and the iBank earns a fee. So that's why investment bankers make so much money. They have very little risk in this transaction. They are simply a service provider and they make a fee on a very large transaction. In this case, a $100 million transaction. In the bottom left-hand corner here, you'll see this, this little area here. And it says that if the market interest rate is equal to what is offered, then everything squares up. The face amount equals the amount that is paid and the coupon rate equals the yield to maturity, and that's called issued at par. However, if the market value of the bond is greater than the face, that means the interest rate was too low, and investors are willing to pay more money than the face amount, and that's called issuing at a premium. So think of premium as more money than the face amount. And third condition, is if the market value is less than the bond, then we say it is issued at a discount. And that scenario occurs when the coupon interest rate is not high enough. So the investor, to induce them to buy the bond, you have to cut away at the price. So it's cheaper than 100 and it goes down. So that's why it's called a discount. So those are some of the basic terms on the transaction at the point of issuing that bond. So you might be wondering, like, how do we determine the price of the bond based on the yield required by investors? So here's an example. Look at the right side here. And here we, as we mentioned, we have a $100 million face amount, and we offer a coupon interest rate of 8%, which is $8 million per year. And the last payment, the last cash flow, is one very large payment, and that is the face amount and that is at maturity. So these are the cash flows we get, and you'll see that drawn out here as an example. These blue lines here represent the $8 million that are paid each year, and this last payment here, face, represents the amount of repayment of the full face amount. So let's do this in Excel and look at how to determine the actual price of the bond. So I just brought all of those parameters forward and I'll show you the math. So as we mentioned, the interest rate, and we, have, we need to be very precise about this, equals the coupon rate, 8%, times the face amount of $100 million, right? So that's $8 million per year. We'll just copy that. And for each of the five years, by contract, we're going to pay that amount. The principal is the face amount, and that's 100 so the cash flows are very simply the principal and the interest as every loan. So if we copy it over, this is the cash flow. 
And this in numeric terms is what we've drawn out here graphically. So the interest rate, this part should sound very familiar, 0 0.09, because notice that the investor is requiring a 9% return. Therefore, we can determine a factor. And this, you've also learned before, is 1 divided by open parens, 1 plus the interest rate required, F4, to lock it as an absolute reference, close the parens to the power of 1. Then we copy that, and, let, and the, the time is a relative reference. So now we have our PV factors. So bond price is equal to each of the present value of these cash flows. $7 million is what $8 million is worth to us today if our discount rate is 9%, right? And so we copy that over for each of the payments. Now we have our payments. Year 1, year 2, year 3, year 4, year 5. And notice the big one is year 5, obviously, when we get the face amount. So the price equals the sum of the PVs. And that's all you need to remember. So equals sum, and the answer is 96.11. What that means is if the investor pays 96.11 million for this bond and gets 8 million a year for five years, and in the fifth year receives 100 million back, the entire yield for that set of payments is 9%. So logically, you might think of, well, I get 8% on a $96 million investment per year, right? So that's that's a little bit more than 8%. And then at the end of the five-year term, I'm going to get a check for $100 million when I only paid $96 million. So there's a little extra interest, right? That extra interest or, or face value uh, chips in to increase the yield of the entire set of cash flows from 8 to a little more than 8 from the uh, annual payments to yet a little bit more than eight, specifically to get you to nine, based on the little extra you get from the face amount. So that's kind of how bonds work. The investor gets a specific yield based on the entire set of cash flows. The issuer knows that they get some money. Maybe they didn't get $100 million, they got 96, and they know exactly what they need to do to pay off that bond, namely live up to the terms of the bond. Eight million a year for five years, and at the end of five years, pay the hundred million and the entire bond will be paid off. So that's that's kind of the how the bonds work and the mechanics of the pricing given a certain amount required by the marketplace by way of yield. Next we'll look